Now, here comes the music. It's 8 o'clock. It is Tuesday night. <clears throat> you know where DJ's at. I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. It's Buddy with the Round Table, DJ Round Table, and uh, it is my honor and my pleasure. As always, I have uh, DJ Fire, who uh, last time was a little bit late because he was working hard and getting some stuff done. He's got a bunch of irons in the fire, always doing stuff. If you haven't done so already, make sure you check out his channels. He has more than one channel. He has DJ Fire for DJ, and he has a couple other channels as well that he does a lot of reviews on equipment and gear. So make sure that you look at everything, because if you're in the market for some other things that are not non-DJ, uh, such as tools or uh, did a water pump, he's done a bunch of different stuff. Um, he did uh, car speakers I just saw the other day. So if you're looking for car speakers for your vehicle, he just did that the other day on his, uh, on his uh, testing channel. So uh, make sure you follow him and all three of his channels. Uh, I'm hoping to get uh, Abe Alley. He said he's going to try to come in here. And we'll go from there. Uh, tonight, um, because it is the month of Halloween, it is the scary month. It is the month that uh, everybody likes to watch all the horror movies and stuff like that. I thought it would be a good night to ask uh, the people here, and I'm sorry, DJ Fire, uh, about their experience of anything paranormal. And, you know, I don't really usually touch things like that for DJs, but sometimes things happen at event centers. Uh, creepy things happen. Uh, you see things or something in stories for places. So, uh, DJ Fire, do you have a story that you could talk about uh, either at a venue that you're working at for DJ and or that, or just in general, something that happened to you that was... Uh, uh, dealing with the maybe the other side with ghosts or goblins or whatever you want to say, little green men. I I don't think I've had anything like that. No. Um, mm -mm. I mean, I don't think I've even DJ to hell. This would be my first Halloween wedding um, this this year. So, like I said, I've only been doing it for two years or so. Of course, the year that I started was a uh, pandemic year, so wasn't a big year that year. I don't think it was a big year for any year for any DJ, but 2020, no, 2020, no. 2020 was uh needless to say was uh a very uh <laughs> very, very bad year. And I am uh, sharing my channel links um in the comments if you guys that, yep. Yeah, I'm trying to get them all linked here so you can all go check them out. No problem. Yeah, if you're watching it, and again, all these links will also be put into, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, the links are down below. You'll see at DJ Fire, you can go right to his uh, DJ Fire page, and he has connection to all his pages, Nathan 343, and all the other channels he has. So you can go through and look uh, through things and connect right there via Instagram, via um, Facebook, via YouTube, and you can go through that and make sure that you have everything connected and then you follow his channel because again, like like I said before, his DJ Fire stuff, he has a lot of reviews on there. But and he has additional reviews on his review channel, and then he has his third channel, which he has his rather business, which is landscaping. So make sure that you follow those uh, channels. Make sure you go and look, subscribe, and um, show some show some love. And if you're out there looking in the background, this is the DJ Roundtable Show where DJs talk about. DJ items and talk about, you know, things that how we overcome, how we overdo things and I can't say overdo things, but how we overcome things and how we get through things and how to become better DJs and share kind of like what, how we do things. Does it mean we're right? It just means that this is the way we look at like a problem go, okay, this is the problem. This is how we solve that problem. Is there a more way to solve a problem? Sure. Yes, there is. There's always more than a way to save a, solve a problem. And I'm just giving you my insight, and Nathan, DJ Fires, gave his insight. Abe Alley gives his insight. Mike James. Any of the DJs on here, we're just giving you our insight how we solve problems and how we run into things because we're in the industry. We're working DJs. We are out there um, almost every weekend doing something. You're talking to a client, uh, trying out gear, or working mm -hmm. in an event one way or another. I still have... This weekend, I have two weddings. I have one Friday and I have one Saturday. 
and I still got weddings after that all the way until December 31st. And uh, now I'm looking at wedding shows. So we'll talk about that in an upcoming episode of about wedding shows, how we set up for wedding shows. So as I was saying before, um, I know Abe's got some great stuff uh, for um, paranormal stuff that happened. You know, again, uh, he, he has on his podcast, Abe Alley Podcasts. He talks about a event happened when he was a child for UFO stuff. So if you wanted to go to his podcast and watch and listen about uh, UFOs, you can do that very easily. He has a lot of great information about that, about the experience he had. Uh, and it is very, very interesting. Uh, he's had a few experiences with uh, UFOs, and I think he's done some also some stuff with ghosts. Uh, and like myself, uh, I can't say I have had a lot of experience with ghosts, but I can say that my parents' house, I grew up uh, in the city of Chicago. Um, I grew up uh, far northwest side of the city. And my parents' house was built in the 50s. My parents were the second owners of the house. The woman who owned the house before us built the home. And she was there until we got the house in uh, the late 70s. And the house, the basement of the house always felt off always felt like someone's watching me my dad always would say i would come running upstairs go downstairs do laundry because we didn't have that we for, for the first many years the basement was just a basement we really had you know not much down there we had um some i had a mile train set down there my younger brother had uh um a from Tyco uh uh a car a truck set um US one uh trucking set, which was you know basically like slot cars. I had HO scale train down there. Uh I we had our laundry down there, you know, washer and dryer and stuff like that. So we would go down there and then later on there was a phone down there because you know I'm old enough to remember still having house phones and having corded phones. My parents had a corded phone down there. I would go down there and talk to people and talk to friends and especially some girls. And <laughs> you know. It was, I would go down there and talk because that way I'd get away from, I don't want my parents listening to me talking to a girl, you know, when you're, when you're 15, 16, 17, or talking to your friends. I hated, I hated having house phones where there was two and the other person could pick up the other line and see who you were talking to. Yes. yes. I'd be talking to some girl. My mom would pick up mine. I'd be like, mom, get off the other phone. It happened to me many a time. My, <laughs> my dad would get on the phone and be like, what are you doing? I'm like, dad, I'm talking to a girl. Oh. Okay, we had multiple phones in the house, right? Uh, and we even had the cordless phone with the pulled out antenna, so the, we had the cordless with the pull out antenna. We had a Cobra phone, you know. This is the '80s and '90s. It was all that stuff right there. Uh, but the basement always felt unsettled. Always, I always felt someone was watching me, and I always felt sometimes going up the stairs uh, up to the kitchen. Uh, cause the, the door for the uh, basement was in the kitchen. Uh, I always felt that something was coming up behind me on the stairs multiple times. And I would run upstairs, close the door and lock it behind me. And the door was a big heavy wooden door. It had a skeleton key to it. And it was always in the door. And the doorknob was one of those old doorknobs with a crystal glass doorknob. And right. it's, you know, you go downstairs, a lot of times you don't think of anything, but a lot of times I would feel something or someone watching me. So my younger brother um, said he saw stuff. He saw ghosts down there a couple of times. And then my baby brother, who's eight years younger than I am, because uh, I moved out by a time. I moved out. Uh, well, before I moved out, my dad's fi finished the basement somewhat. And put a, ba a room down there, and that was my room, and always felt at ease down there. And then, when I moved out, my dad redid the basement even more so, and more converted the basement into more livable space, make it into a room, um, make it into uh, their bathroom downstairs, and such, such put more walls up, so forth, so on. And my baby brother was down there um, one day, and he said he saw look like a soldier. Uh, walking through the basement 
he saw him out of the corner of his eye, turned around and saw the guy standing there. And then he walked into, uh, basically we had, it's hard to explain, in the area where the laundry is at, we had washer dryer, big, huge, it was metal, um, basically sink. Uh, uh, and it was a two apartment sink. It had a drain in the bottom of the, of the, of the sink. And then right next to it was a shower that was it was concrete, basically a line coming right there, a shower head, and it had a, a metal surround, a steel surround with a curtain. It was put in, in the 50s. It was a shower downstairs because that's the way the homeowners did it. And uh, when we we cl we cleaned it, we were we would use the shower so often because three boys, my dad and my mom, the the four of us. We had one bathroom growing up, and sometimes both two of us wanted to take showers at the same time. So my dad rust oleum the, the the shower, fixed it up a little bit, cleaned it, and we'd use it as a shower. But my baby brother said this soldier walked into the side wall of the shower, so it's a metal steel wall. He walked into the wall of the shower, and my brother, maybe brother, said he opened a curtain up to see if there's anyone in the shower. No one was there. So the guy walked into through the wall, the metal wall of the shower, and into the shower. Uh, that right there is, you know, again, very, very scary because I've always felt something or someone watching me there. And I, I, I've been to places for DJing that they have said, um, there's maybe ghosts at there was a venue in indiana that actually uh, a ghost hunting group uh that's was on, that's on tv was there uh weeks prior to the wedding we did uh they didn't find really anything uh the, the people there said yeah there's stuff happens but you know they're like is it really ghosts we don't know they're like they're just basically brushing it off but people come there all the time to this this bed and breakfast to ghost hunt. Um, I've been to other, other venues that talking to some staff sometimes they're like, yeah, we supposedly have a ghost here floating around, but you know, as long as you don't say anything or bother them, they're not going to bother you. So I, I don't have, you know, really a, a really good story other than some things that happened to me when I was a kid. Uh, my dad worked 37 years of the 38 years he worked for the city of Chicago. He worked 37 years out on a hair airport. And my dad told me stories about stuff he saw, things he saw, things he experienced out at O'Hare. And I, I, unfortunately, I lost my dad a few years ago. And I, I wish my dad was here because my dad, he had some really good stories about stuff. And it, it's one of the things that I need to, um, I'm not going to do it tonight here on, on the round table, but one of these days I need to record a story, a stories my dad told me and, you know, repeat those stories for the best of my knowledge, best of my memory of him telling me things, but he saw things out of O'Hare Airport that, uh, uh, you know, my dad was always a tough guy. He never was a, a, a wuss, but he saw things and heard things and, uh, and it, it scared him sometimes. And I still remember um, a few times my dad um, coming home kind of, I would say, shaken to the core. Uh, one of the biggest ones was, uh, unfortunately, with Flight 191 when that crashed out O'Hare. My dad was there. Uh, he saw a lot of things. He was out there for a few days. It, it hit him pretty hard for the things they saw uh, out there. Um, and it's up that the firefighters and the coppers were telling my dad what was going on um because they all worked together the, the guys for department of aviation and, and chicago police chicago fire and they have all these agencies there but uh my dad i still remember when it happened my dad that day my dad when my dad came home he worked uh overtime obviously with that going on he was white but it was a few other times too that he was unsettled coming back from the airport um not just from accidents or something, something tragic like that, but things he saw, um, stuff he couldn't explain. 
and told us later on, told us a story of what was what was. So it, it's just one of the things again, Halloween season, uh, we all um, you know, watch again, watch stuff on TV or watch a scary movie, watch Frankenstein or whatever. And it, it's it's again, it, it's that the thing that's I like to share a little bit of that stuff and and kind of uh have a little fun with the holiday season uh with Halloween. But I will say that I I have a lot of stories from my dad, but again, I don't have a lot of personal stories. And it's kind of like, oh man, I wish I had a few really good personal stories. And getting the closest I have is why I felt at my parents' house and uh, my brother, my baby brother running into it. My younger brother seen stuff, but my baby brother really running into it and seeing a full vision spirit walking into the sidewall of, of the shower. So, and he was basically, my, my big brother said he was where he was standing at. Uh, he was standing by between the washer and dryer, which the washer and dryer were in a corner. So washers on one side, dryers on the other side. And there's, there's a gap between the washer and dryer, probably maybe two feet, three feet in the corner. The corner was just open. And a lot of times we just put in the corner, um, like the box of soap, in the corner and scoop the soap out of there put in the washer or the, the basement had uh the walk up so far and there was a ledge so we put soap on the ledge and stuff like that so you take soap and you know so it was when i think he was standing there and the guy in the shower is maybe four feet five feet away from where he was at and he's right next across away from where the shower wall is at is the furnace, and then next to that, in, fr in front of that, toward you, close you, is the hot water heater, and then the chimney. Um, the hot water tank is, you know, of course, plumbed in the chimney, and the furnace is plumbed into the chimney. And basically, it sounded like the guy walked out of the furnace, paused for a second, looked at my brother, and then kept walking forward into the shower. So hmm. I, had, I have to look or I have to try to remember what he, what he told me. It's been a couple of years and uh, it, it was, it was interesting. It was very interesting. Cause I was like, I always, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> All right. So unless we get something else in here to talk about their experience, we'll go on to the next subject. Um, Buddy, I think I'm going to be uh, changing up my setup a little bit. Mike has a, uh, well, I've, I've seen it done before, and i um, trying to make my setup a little bit, like, be able to use all of my trussing, but make it a smaller setup. So, um, I was going to kind of show you a couple setups I found online that kind of looks like what I'm looking to do, and see okay. what your opinions were. Uh, well, you, you can't share, because it won't share. No, I'm trying to figure out how to flip the camera. Oh, there it is up there. Okay, I was going to say, because you can't, can't share it. Trice, yeah. There's this setup. Okay. So it would be kind of like this, but instead of having this piece, this piece here would be connected to these. Okay. Using, let me see if I can find, hold on, let me get out of that picture. Get my mouse over here real quick. Find the other, uh, here's one. So it'd be like this. Okay. And obviously it would be, you know, these are three pieces of trust to make that one. And then I was thinking of doing a six foot piece and then getting a smaller um, five foot piece to go next to it. Where's that other one at? There's kind of one that kind of gives you an idea. And then I could put my booth right up against that. And then if I wanted, I could put my TV right on the front of that truss. What I would say, uh, go back to the other picture. Go back to the previous picture. Hold on. Uh, this one? Look how the, the they... It looks like the DJ is actually on the truss itself, using the truss as a table. Right. I just don't know if I all my stuff would fit on my truss. I have quite a bit of stuff. I would say that looks really cool. And you see, right. the, you see this, you see the, um, you, you see the wall behind him. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, what do you call it? Facade. And you can yep. see there's a lap American back DJ there. or. Yeah, and it usually it's someone running the lights. It's a lot. If you look at some of the DJs, they'll do that. They'll have the bun booth out front. They'll have the DJ out front. And then behind, 
they'll have another purse behind that facade or you know they'll uh, they'll have a wall up or whatever mm -hmm. and have them run the sound and run the lights show right so that might be a better way of doing it if you got a bunch of stuff just having out front the laptop and having the controller and having you know your but your mics and stuff like that are behind you and have someone else there to run that yeah we'll just it might we'll be just have to see uh, just it some might stuff be cool i'm doing it yeah just some stuff i've came across i've got to order the special clamps that I need to get are going to cost me for four of them are going to cost me like 80 bucks. Oh, that's not bad. So these are the, I'll show them to you here. They're global trust. I couldn't find any off brand ones, but they're come on. Stupid thing. Flip. They're those. You know, you have to ask yourself, When you're buying something that's safety equipment like that, those those class, do you want something you know is going to work, or you want something you're going to guess? True. I mean, it. Global I mean, trust. I, you know I they, they global, work. I think global trust is all. I think all this stuff is made all in the exact same place. You know, it's all made in China. They just claim that it's their stuff. I mean, I, we don't know that. I guarantee if you took a piece of this Cedar Link Trust and a piece of Global Trust, I don't think you'd be able to tell the difference. Probably, probably not unless you're doing a bunch of, you know, testing. It, it could be different to metal. It could be different to thickness. It could be different on a bunch of things. And I would, um, I would really would say uh, that would be an interesting thing. Can you really tell the difference between them? And if you took them to a lab, could a lab tell the difference in the either in the metal material, how it's built, how the weld is, and so forth? So on, is there really a difference? And if there's not really much of a difference, then it's great. If there is a difference between, let's say, Global Trust is um, a thicker piece of metal, it's a better alloy, it weighs heavier or less, whatever the case is, right. I'd probably say then that would be the difference between that and other brands, and that's. If I was a manufacturer, and this is something that, you know, I, you know, I'm not a manufacturer, I don't make anything. Uh, I'm just a consumer because I buy the equipment to use it. But if I was a manufacturer, that's one of the things I would do. Uh, a lot of manufacturers for many years, um, when I worked in electronics many, many, many moons ago, they would uh, buy competitor brand name it tvs vcrs whatever it is uh take it apart take a look at how they're building it and how are we different how are we making our product uh you know are we making our product better or our product equal you know what are the difference between the, the two sides why is this one more money you know and that's a, that's something that i feel that i don't hear from manufacturers oh i'm better because i am well why are you better? You know, why, what makes you think you're better? You know, show me some documentations that you are better because of the fact that it's, oh, hold on. Hey, you're cutting out a little bit. Yeah, I saw that. Huh, okay. I, I want to see why, you know, why you're better. You know, tell me why is this better? Why is that better? Give me a reason why. It, it's a better way of doing things. You know, why is it a better product? Why is it superior to someone else's? You know, price is part of it. You know, price is a, a key component. But to me, price is not the only thing I look at. I look at quality of the product and what they're offering me for that product. Is it worth the price that they're asking for? Is it worth the price that they're saying, hey, this is what we sell this product for. Is it worth it? You know, why did I pay all this money for a stair of lights? You know, because they look cool, because other DJs have it. A little bit of that, but I look at the look of it and look how they are. And now working with the stair of lights, I really feel that they're worth the money. Just like the guys who use, you know, uh, Ape Lab lights and use some of the other lights. You get you you try lights out and you work with them 
and they do exactly what you feel it's best for you, that's half the battle. Uh, you know, if you're getting lights, as right what the cost of a light is, if you're buying a light that you want it to do X, Y, Z, and it does X, Y, Z, and you're happy with it, you're satisfied with it, then, hey, you know what? Great. And that's the thing is that you want to have a good look. You want to be a little bit different than everyone else. But also you want to have stuff that works right the first time. And if something goes wrong, right. you want to have something, you know, a recourse, uh, some way to get stuff repaired. And that to me is another thing is having a support for a product as well. And, you know, you can look at price all day long. Let's say Global Trust and the other company is the same exact product, but Global Trust has better support than the other one. When something goes wrong, where do I want to go? I want to go to a place that's the most support or right. it's easier to get parts from. So that's, there's all these va variables in it when you're looking at equipment. Uh, you know, I like RCF for your sound quality. And I just, you know, a while, a little bit ago, we had a problem with one of the, the units, one of the J8s. The, we, we took down the speaker and heard a rattle inside the top cabinet. And I sent the unit into New Jersey where they're at for the repair. And it's, you know, a couple years old, my J8, and they repaired it, no charge, and sent it back. You know, I paid for it out there, but they sent it back, no charge. What's over? What was it? Don't know. But they repaired it, no charge. So I'm like, wow, that, that blew me away. Because I've had JBLs and J something wrong with JBL, send them, bring them in the shop, and it's you know, 300 bucks, you know, two, three, 400 bucks to fix it. You know, some little uh, my, uh, chip goes wrong on the board. Got to fix it. I had my CDJs. I had one of the bearings go bad in a CDJ. 200 bucks to fix the CDJ. That's fine and great. But it, it's one of the things that I don't mind painting out. Pioneer, you know, they had ordered the parts from, uh, from Japan because they got, they closed their uh, U.S., warehouse so they get the parts from japan so they had ordered a part from japan three weeks later i got my cdj back so i was like okay no big deal um and i still have my sx2 so i wasn't using the cdjs as much as my sx2 but you know when you rely on your s on, on something you want to make sure you have backups and redundancies and now i i have my xz which i'm using as my primary my sx2 is my backup and now my cdjs is my third you know I, I, you know, I have multiple ways of doing stuff, but anytime with any product, I always, you you want that cool look, you want that great uh, feel, but also you want to make sure you invest money into stuff that's going to work well for you. And it's right. going to stand the test of time. The last thing you want is something that you spend money on and all of a sudden it just, it falls apart. Yeah, and I know uh, some, of the, some of the things you tested um, some of the products you've tested uh, have come really good. Some products you tested, it's like, yeah, it's not bad, but I wouldn't go right for it. Well, yeah. you just wait. Thursday, there's a video coming out, and you're going to see a product from a company that has sent me a lot, a lot of stuff. This product sucks. So, really? Yeah, very well sucks. Wow. Sucks enough, I'm giving them away. <laughs> I don't I don't want to, yeah, no. Wow. They're already, as soon as I can get time to take them to the guy's house, yeah, they're just, yeah, it might be an old, it's a it's a DJ light, but it's, it's an older light, I guess. It wasn't even supposed to get sent to me. It got sent to me by a mistake. It's supposed to go to some other YouTuber. And somehow it got sent to me. So I'm waiting on the person to email me back about Tor. She told me to make a video on it. I said, okay. So I got them. And I'm like, oh boy, <laughs> uh, these suck. <laughs> so the next thing I talk about, I, I know you, you said you've been doing it for a few years. Have you had a gig that you had to? work with a live musician at no gig. no you have not yet no nope. okay so most of the time when most of the time when someone hires me i'm the only person there playing the music so 
So this past weekend, the wedding I had, um, great couple, great wedding. Uh, we did reception only. Uh, venue I've been to plenty of times before. The um, as the bride called her, called him her cousin, is a um, live musician. He does stuff at you know restaurants and stuff like that. He plays the accordion, and then we had the father of the groom. He plays sax. He's not a professional, but he is. He's more than just, just a hobbyist. He does play it, mm -hmm. and he actually really, really good. Uh, him and the guitarist were really good. The guy who played uh, accordion, he did all cocktail hours. So he was there, uh, doing, he did cocktail hour, and he was playing the accordion, singing, um, talking to people when they walk by. He's family, so he knows a lot of people who were there. Uh, so he was saying hi to people and stuff like that, you know, and, um, playing the accordion and we didn't have to support him we had to support dad we had to run him through uh our sound system and we also had to run the guitars through our sound system because when the guitarist was trying to play he had an amp and again it's a, it's a nice quality amp it's not like a bad amp but it's small it was really screeching well a lot of highs it had no low end because it's a single speaker single one-way speaker uh, and it didn't have the the growl and feel you need of a sub mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So I plugged them in our system, and the sax uh, sounded awesome, and then the guitar sounded just absolutely awesome. And they played uh, perfect from Ed Sheeran, uh, and there was tons of applause, and the bride and groom were dancing uh to it nick and uh janelle uh they were dancing to it and they the look on their face was just pure ecstatic it was just like wow they were enjoying themselves and dad enjoyed himself too doing it and i love supporting artists like that and, and doing stuff like that the only thing is that what i didn't like was they didn't contact us directly. They told uh, Nick just told I just need uh, told me he needs an XLR connector. I said that's fine. Uh, I wasn't probing too much either because I'm like, okay, they should be set up. We'll see what they get there, and if they need to, we'll change around support. Uh, I just was hoping they would contact me and ask me some questions. And I said, please, you know, have them contact me, have them talk to me, you know. And I don't know if, if it's like you know they're like, oh no, it's okay. We'll, we'll get through it versus I want to be more, I, I, you know, I wasn't as proactive. I think I should have been, I should have been more proactive. It makes me give me your dad's number. Give me the, the other guy's number. Let me talk to them, find what they need. Uh, let me talk to the, uh, uh, to the guy playing accordion. Let me find out what he needs because the guy who was playing accordion, he brought all this equipment in. He had a pile of equipment uh, speakers and everything like that. And I kind of felt bad for him because he's just doing cocktail and he could have very easily plugged into my system. Didn't need speakers, didn't need a lot of that stuff. Uh, I could have got him a microphone, could have got him a mic stand, uh, set it all up for him. And, you know, we would charge a fee, for, of course, for it to support him. But it's something we could have done we could have done for him. And all he had to do is basically uh, play his accordions, stare uh, and sing and do his, do his bit, uh, do a cocktail hour. And then all he had to do that is take his accordion with him. And maybe uh, he had a, like a drum machine with him to give beats that the drum machine and a couple of things we've been, you know, fully loaded and done with versus leaving stuff there. Uh, I, I think next time I run into a situation like this, I, I'm going to ask to get the information to reach out to the couple, not to the couple, to the people that are doing the music and talk to them because we could have done so much more for him. And I kind of just, him, you know, bring his own speakers in and stuff. I'm like, we could, we, we could have done it. And I, you know, I just, again, I know you said you haven't done it before. 
I, I, I like supporting musicians when customers have them. Doesn't matter if it's a sax player, doesn't matter if it's a guitarist, doesn't matter whatever. And a lot of times I try to find stuff out from them, but I think I need to be more pro, uh, proactive on that and talking to them directly and getting their information saying, okay, fine, great. Who are they? What's their name? What's their phone number, or email address, and so forth, so on. So I can contact them and find more information out because there's a lot goes on with, um, with live music. There's a lot happens. Uh, they take breaks. How often are you going to take a break? When are you going to take a break? What do you need support on? What do you need sound on? There's a lot there. So it's one of the things that I feel as a, uh, especially doing weddings, we do support. We do, we have done it. We've done it in the past, but I feel we need to maybe step a little bit more. That makes sense. Um, so now you have your thoughts on your new different setup that you want to do for. Um, it'll probably be a next year kind of setup. 2023. Uh, yeah, it'll be my 2023 setup. Um, I've got a wedding in May. Uh, that's my first wedding as of now. I don't have anything booked before then. And I think I have one in June. Uh, the one in June. There's a possibility I might have one this December, but I told them, I said, I snowplow, and I don't know what, uh, you know, I don't know. If they're going to book uh, with me, he told me he would know something by the middle of November. So we'll we'll see. I I know the guy, but I talked to Mike and said, you know, make it easier. You could, you know, it's at the Moose Lodge, I think, here in Charleston. I was like, you, if me, if it's not snowing or anything, obviously I'll do it. But um, I might use that setup there um, for that. We'll have to see. It's it's just a small setup. I would probably just do. Um, my, you know, the piece going across two pieces and then the bar is going across and hang my four movers and maybe have the uh, stinger sitting on top of the totems. Um, that That's one thing that Mike, he, he calls that setup that I have my, my stick yeah. across and then I have that bar that looks like a T that I have my mm -hmm. movers hanging on. He calls it a scarecrow. Because <laughs> when you put the stinger on top, it looks like a face. So you got the arms and the face, and then he's like, "Oh, that's your scarecrow setup deal." So I can see that. I guess I can see that. He the, told um, me he's like, he's like that kind of looks. I mean, I could tell he doesn't like it or whatever, but um, I don't know. It's, I I've seen it done a couple times. I think it looks cool. Well, that's the thing, and not, not everyone does the same exact thing. You know, again, you guys are in the same market. You guys are friends, and you do told totally different things because. Everyone does things differently. That, that's the one thing about being a DJ is it's there's no right or wrong answer to everything. You need to have multiple plans, but there's multiple ways of doing things. Now there are right. some things we can agree on, which you know, which we can look at and say, no, you that's that's a wrong thing to do, and that's a bad thing. But some things, you know, some people just they feel that's the best way of doing it. They don't know another way. And if we explain sometimes, hey, you know what, you could try this or try that. Hey, why don't you try this or try that? Or, hey, once you look at this, look at that, maybe, you know, you can change stuff. There's always, you know, taking constructive criticism from other DJs when the DJs look at stuff, go, hey, you know what? You might want to get some Velcro, uh, you know, cable ties to make, you know, your set a little tighter. Um, or you may want to scrim this or you may want to, you know, maybe you want to, you know, clean up this or, hey, you know, once you try this laptop stand or, this or that those things right there those are constructive criticism you know hey you have you thought about doing this or you thought about doing that because they're looking at a different set of eyes than you are and have a different idea and right or wrong it's a different idea and you have to explore that sometimes a lot of times i do if someone says hey you know buddy uh why don't you have you tried this try that i want to explore that and say hmm, let me think about that let me let me let me process that for a bit and say how can I process it? How can I do this? How can I do that? And that to me is, is a huge thing is getting into, uh, especially getting into the lights when you get into that kind of stuff, how can you make things easier, but also better? 
You know, I, I don't want yeah, to do things, but also you know, I, we, I make it simple. Me and Mike did that setup in uh, Evansville, Indiana last, uh, well, it's been almost a year ago, a year next month. And uh, I'm trying to think, when was it? The 12th? I think that was the 12th of November. But uh, people seen the video and they were like, why did you set up in front of emergency exit? You should have set up in the other corner. And I'm like, uh, well, the other corner said emergency exit too. So I don't know what you wanted me to do, you know? Um, and I, I kind of seen, you know, I kind of thought about that. I'm like, yeah, that was kind of a, a, a dumb move. I should have maybe. I, yeah, hindsight 20. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I should have set up to the side. Um, I don't know if you've seen, and it's weird now because now that's happened. I see multiple DJs making some sort of mistake like that. And I mean, it's probably don't think about it. You know, we're just, okay, that's where we're at, meant to set up. There's other exits. You know, we're not going to have a fire. We're not going to have any problems. But DJ Solstice's last video, great setup, looked really good. Uh, the only thing that I noticed was he put his fog machine right in the path of a high traffic area. I don't know if you've seen that. When he was doing his intro, there were people coming up off the stage and walking over his fog machine or haze machine or whatever. I think it was a haze machine. And I don't know if they were just doing that that one time or if that's the way they entered the stage all the time or whatever. But I was like, not not to be you know mean, and but that's a traffic yeah, trip hazard. And it could have caused him to get his proper um, product damaged. If someone was to step on it, kick it over, kick it, you know, it's not so much that there's a trip hazard. He could have got his equipment damaged. And I was like, you know, that I've never put something in someone's path. So, I mean, I want to. That's the thing is that you have to look at and go, okay, fine and great. Uh, you know, what is a better way of doing something? Sometimes, you know, it's a matter of, again, a different perspective and them saying, hey, you know, uh, look at this, look at that. You know, we had um, a wedding a few weeks ago. We were set up at a venue and we were in front of an emergency exit. We were probably 15 feet, 10, 15 feet in front of it. And there was room to get to it uh, around our equipment. Was I happy to be there? No, but this is where they usually put DJs. And it's like, yeah, to me, no, I, I don't want to be there. I don't want to be in that that section because, again, I'm, I am I don't want to be in front of an uh, exit door, you know. And could right. people, you know, egress other ways? Yes. Could they egress the, the way we were? Yes, they could have. Uh, you know, they could have gone around the equipment, you know, something bad would happen. We We have ways to move things very quickly. But not only that, we have um, we have to, you know, also be proactive too. And I really feel that uh, we we you know we could push a little harder. Uh, I didn't want to push any harder because again, I don't want to make the the venue mad. I don't want to make the um, client mad. The client was very happy with that. But you know, again, if I if I could, I would not have been there. And right. sometimes you're you're forced to do stuff that you're like, yeah, um, unfortunately, this is uh this, this is what uh, we're we're have to do. This is what we, the, the you know the facility wanted. This is what the client wanted. This is what uh, in in a real world this is what we had to do. You know, we it wasn't the best, but it worked. It worked for the situation. And that's the thing. Sometimes that people forget that. Not every situation is ideal and every situation is perfect. And sometimes again, it is hindsight's 2020. You can go back and go, yeah, I should have not have done it that way. But you know, it's it's okay again, okay to be construct, uh, construct, uh, constructive criticism if I can talk right <laughs> and right. give positive feedback and say, hey, you know what, this is what I would have done. Versus saying that you're a bad DJ, and I, I, you know, I'm not. I don't like to call people as bad DJs. No, I, I ask questions. I don't. I don't think DJ Solstice is a bad DJ. I think there was just oh. a, a, a an error, and I mean, it, I mean, it was in a decent spot. Yeah, he wanted to come out, hit his lights, and all that. I would have set it back on the corner on the other, like the same area, but maybe back up on the other side of the steps, so they they could have walked in front of it. You know, I try to set my hazer. Hazer, phaser, whatever. I try to set it up behind me so that the fog comes out behind me, rolls out over my lights, and then makes the lights shown. But 
I mean, I, I'm, I'm not criticizing him at all. I think he's a great DJ. He, he does a really good job. His setup looks great. I just pointed, you know, saw something and then thought, you know, I wouldn't want to see someone hurt or tripped. No. Or but uh, more, his stuff damaged and all that. You know, oh, some no, of that no. stuff and, and not the, replaceable. No one's right saying now. that. No one's saying that. And again, it, it's, it's sometimes, you know, again, different person, different perspective, different, you know, look way of looking at something and saying, oh, hey, you know, I would have done it this way. Is it good or bad? You know, again, Matt does a heck of a job. Is there some things I would change? Yeah, I, I wouldn't do some things that Matt does just because I'm a different person. But again, I wasn't there. I can't, you know, you what you see in a camera sometimes is not always exactly what's happening in real life. And then, right. so you have to take into consideration, be like, you can ask questions like, hey, did you know you're in front of a door? Or did you, did you know, hey, that, that, the, your fog machine was way out there. Right. And a lot of times they'll give you an answer saying, "Oh yeah, I knew it was out there because X Y Z. It was out there." Hey Abe, are you coming in? <laughs> we were talking earl earlier about paranormal stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm probably getting ready to jump off. I need to get uh, a couple of these videos done. I'd like to get both of these videos done tonight and uploaded. Got one going out tomorrow. I want one going up while I'm in Kentucky. Um, I can I can give you a little bit more about the the light you're going to see on my channel on uh, Thursday. It's a little moving head. It's a mini moving head from Sheds, and the beam angles like the beam like the the what it projects. The LED is square. It's not round. Really? So and and when and when it changes colors, like if it does all the colors at once, like oh, let me use a couple different items here. So you'll see. So say this, we'll say this little lens cover is square. So this is square. So say this is the red color, and then all of a sudden the red and the green turn on. So you get a red dot and a green dot. Then now the blue wants to turn on. So now you've got the red dot, the green dot, and now here's the blue. Then the white turns on you get all the colors now you got a big square of little squares it's it's uh it's only 10 watts it's not super super bright yeah it's a beam it's a very it's like a two uh it's like a two degree beam or five degree beam or something like that i mean it's okay i mean they're trying to push lighting for the big stage and for djs and stuff like that i would use this if you know i told them i even i even messaged ava and i was like hey I do not recommend this light for anything more than a house party. You know, I mean, it's, it's small. I can hold it in my hand and it's probably only about this big. It's about, you know, less it's than 10 inches of tall. Prosumer kind of level versus a pro or a commercial kind of like the stuff that we like to use is more of the commercial line stuff. It's more yeah. prosumer stuff. That... Now, I I took some of my bigger moving heads. I put the uh, I put the hundred watt by it, and I put the big ten uh, R by it, and I compared them. I said, "Look how big these professional grade lights are compared to this one." You know, I even showed it to Mike, and Mike's like, "Holy cow!" So I don't know who it was supposed to go to, but I know that it wasn't me because they was like, "I got an email or a, a text message from." Our German people, DHL, and I was like, "What do I have coming?" Because I know Ava had been talking to me about the next video, and sent me some stuff. Like she sent me the beam bar deals. Like, well, I've had the beam bars, and I just kind of actually just gave or sold my beam bars to Mike because I don't really use them anymore. And then she wanted to send me one, and I was like, "Well, I've already done some." And I got to thinking, well, there might be something different on them that the other ones didn't have. So. I, was, I told her, I said, if you want to go ahead and send those bean bars, go ahead. And she's like, well, I've already sent you something, but it, it wasn't supposed to go to you. I was supposed to send it to someone else, but I accidentally sent it to you. I said, yeah, I got a text. I thought you had already had and went and sent the bean bars, but she did not. So there was a, uh, a little accident there. So I was like, go ahead and do a video on it. And I'm like, okay, well, I, I went on the website and looked at it. And I'm like, this is going to suck. <laughs> So well, I, I got them. You know, are, are you give your opinion on the light and say, hey, you know, just uh, I wouldn't recommend this light for, you know, a wedding or something. But for a house party, you know, are you just starting out? 
here's a starter light. Here's a light that, you know, for price point, that's the thing I look at is price point. Now they're like you 70 or 80 bucks a piece, I think. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's like that's that's like a perfect thing for someone who wants to do just getting into it, just wants to buy a couple of lights and just start out. Because everybody has to start somewhere. There, no right. one's gonna go it's a good and, starting light, but it's it's not like I, I, if if a DJ showed up to my wedding with a couple of these, I'd be like, what? What what are you doing? That's exactly what I would say. I've seen DJs who have been in the business for a while um, use the dance lights that you can go to Spencer's and buy. Oh, yeah. The, the, the little, little crystal clear cr- crystal. Yeah. yeah, the little clear crystal light that, that like rotates a little bit and it's in there and just throws a little light out. Like you can put in a corner of your room. and That's, that's what Mike started out with. He started out with four little tiny... Uh, red, green, blue, white, uh, itty bitty tiny car lights. I mean, itty bitty and little spinny balls. That's exactly what he started out with. We all but, started somewhere, you know, man. Yeah, we all course, started I somewhere. When I started. I knew when I started. I was like, you know, I want some of the best of the best. I don't want to show up with little stuff. Um, I'm trying to think what the first light I ever got was. What was the first light you ever got? Do you remember? The you, first light you bought. You had, you had, you have, you've had moving heads for a while. You've had, um, what was the, what was the one wedding I saw a while back? It was like one of your first videos. Um, now I gotta go look. <laughs> I, I think it was the bean bars. They were moving back and forth. Chave Swarm is what uh, Abe says. But you had, you had, uh, it was. I think it was a bean bar because it was a bar, and the whole bar removed back and forth. It was, I, I can't remember, it was one of the first ones, videos I saw of yours. And Abe, Abe, oh, grown, Abe, Abe just got new lights. And Abe did I a boxing that. on YouTube. And Abe's done uh, some stuff with lights. So it, it, it's like anything. So, you, know, you live and learn. So. Um, so, but we're going to wrap it up here. We're going to wrap it a little early. You know, we're nine minutes early. I know you said you got to do your video. A doesn't want to come in tonight. I guess we gotta wait till next week. Maybe he'll have his. Maybe he'll have his story. He can tell us. It was. Uh, it well the it's the ADJ Stinger was my first light. Uh, there you go. The ADJ Stinger and Swarm. They're, they're pretty much the exact same light. Yeah, and I have the Shave. I have a couple of Shave Swarms. I, I like those lights. Those they're nice lights. But there were three in one strobe and green mm-hmm. and red laser, laser and. and Decorative. I think they're very cool. I like them. Oh yeah, they're nice lights. I've never had a problem with those things in the two years I've owned them. Not a single problem. So if you're watching this on YouTube, like, subscribe, like and subscribe over to DJ Fire. Go to Abe Alley, Abe Alley Podcast. DJ make, Mike make James. Sure you There's like. a bunch of YouTubers here that we come in here and talk to talk on the show. But make sure you go through and like and subscribe, people, and make sure you like to hear any critics. Uh, crit- uh, critiques anything you want to say down below say it down in the comment section I want to hear some comments from you guys tell me what you want us to talk about put some ideas down there you know tell us what you want to talk about but click that like button click the subscribe button and don't be afraid to follow the channel don't be afraid to follow us on twitch it is tbm productions underscore buddy on twitch and then if you're going to youtube it is tbm productions dj1 and as always, in the description, I always put down, everyone's here, including Abe Alley, who is hiding in the shadows, talking in chat. <laughs> he will be in the description of everything. And, you know, make sure you go to their channel, support them, follow them. Abe, and again, Abe's got his channel. And he has his podcast. You know, Nathan, DJ Fire, has his uh, main channel, but he has a couple other channels, too, including Nathan343. He has Long Care channel. So if you want to see reviews on products there, DJ Mike James, he has, you know, uh, Tech Tuesdays. You know, he has his Tech Talk. He has his gig logs. I have my gig logs. So, again, you want to get some, you see stuff for DJs, we're the channels to do it on. Make sure you follow, like, and subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching. We really do appreciate you guys tuning in here and spending some time with us. And... Like I said before, if you want to hear something, you want to see something, you want to ask something, ask. Yep, Instagram underscore total event DJ uh, is uh, Abe Alley's <laughs> business. 
And DJ Fire just gave him two thumbs up in the chat. So <laughs> make sure you guys are out there. Like and subscribe everything. Other than that, you guys enjoy yourselves.